Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. After working in the UK for over two years now, I feel like I can finally say with confidence that I found my next focus. And that, unsurprisingly, is North Wales and Snowdonia. And in this video, I'm heading back for two days of photography in one of my favorite landscapes, exploring an incredibly interesting abandoned quarry, creating some of my favorite work yet, and being reminded of one really important lesson along the way. Hey everyone, welcome back to uh, Wales. I feel like this is becoming a recurring theme uh, in the intros of most of my videos, but I'm back up uh, in North Wales. I'm gonna spend uh, today and tomorrow, so a couple days, just uh, shooting around here. The area I'm in right now, back kind of near Camorthan uh, Quarry, where I've spent some time in a, a few previous videos, but uh, this town here and, and the surrounding area just really fascinates me. Uh, so I've wanted to kind of narrow my focus and start potentially making some long-term work here now that I'm kind of getting a better understanding of it all. So uh, that's the plan, spend a couple days here. Got the four x five with me. I uh, got some black and white loaded, some color loaded. Gonna make some images and hopefully make uh, one good image that I'm happy with and could maybe be something to kick this off. But uh, this morning, I'm out at this other quarry on the other side of the town. Uh, it's one that I haven't been to yet, so I figured it could be a good place to start. And then I wanna make some work in town, maybe this afternoon, this evening. We'll kind of just go with the flow. You know, it's Wales. Uh, the one thing I've learned is you never really know what you're gonna get. So just gonna embrace it all have some fun and you know just excited to be back in this area with that uh yeah i absolutely love so start the climb see what we can find okay so just got up to this first level uh didn't film any of this but met a, a local pretty much right away named dylan lived here his whole life older fella um, who actually used to work out at this quarry. So really fascinating talking to him. Set the camera up real quick and uh, made a portrait with some HP5. Didn't uh, film any of the process because was too consumed with that and actually didn't expect to make an image so quick. But uh, we'll see what it turns out. Good way to start the day, but uh, looks like there's some rain rolling in back there. So my plan is to get up to the top, up there, where there's maybe some uh, shelter if this rain comes in. So this place is pretty incredible. Just surrounded by all this old uh, kind of waste and these essentially mountains. You can see little buildings kind of dotting the top. Endless places to explore here. So apparently there's an old uh, quarry manager's hut in the woods there and then the path goes up. So I'm gonna go look for that. So this area is pretty cool. This isn't the house I thought it was, but looks like the house is actually through there, but really cool this just tucked away here. So I think it's probably not the worst idea to ditch the bag for a sec before I catch my tripod up. Pretty much everything back here. Oh, there's more. It's endless. That's probably what I saw from down below. I don't think this is gonna be like photograph territory. So, very cool back here, but I think uh, I'm gonna pass and head up. Partially because that rain's coming in, and if it does, I wanna be up there where I can get some shelter. This is fascinating, but it's so tight back here in the woods, and uh, this might be a difficult one. Wild though, really, really wild. Okay, so I think I found an image here. I don't know if I'm 100% sold on it, but I kind of feel like that's how I am with every image I make, but uh, it's this really cool vista here. The landscape is obviously pretty incredible. And then you can see like the current workings and then the town off in the distance, some of the weather rolling in. So I'm gonna try and set this up pretty quick and uh, make one black and white with HP5. 
and see what it's like. So I'm getting a fifteenth of a second if I just use the incident meter, but I'm gonna spot, I think. So just spot metering uh, where the workings are down there, which is essentially slate, a little bit lighter, the stuff that's kind of getting a lot of reflected light from the sky. I'm getting in between a, a 15th and a 30th. So I think I'm gonna go with my instant reading, which is a 15th. Actually, I'm gonna do 15th and I'll stop down just a little bit more than F22. So 15th, and we'll go 22 and a third. I'm happy with that, we'll shoot. Hi there. Right. How are you? Well, yeah, so, so come, come talk, but I couldn't see where it's coming from. Oh, it's me talking to my camera. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing? Going for a hike? Yeah, it's climbing the local mountains, you know. Nice. What are you up to? to uh, well, working on a photo project of this area. Oh, yeah. This is cool. Very cool. Okay. All ready to shoot. Go for it. Unfortunately, with this image, after developing it, there was just this large mark across the entire top of the frame, almost like a change in density, like the negative dried unevenly or something happened during developing. And I was only able to clean it up so much in post, but you can still see it over on the right-hand side. So, a little unfortunate. But for all you 4x5 shooters, help me solve the mystery. My other negatives were fine. Maybe this is an issue from condensation over the two days, temperature changes. Anyone ever experienced anything like this? So back to things in a second, just have to quickly talk about the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. If you're a photographer, a website is a really great way to bring together a collection of work, just to see it as a whole and also pair and sequence images. And Squarespace is a great platform to do just that. They have a number of clean and professional templates to choose from, and it's incredibly simple to use. You can just click and drag to sort your images and easily add features like an online store where you can sell prints, photo books, and other things like that. So head over to squarespace.com today for your free trial, and when you're ready to launch, you can use the code Kyle McDougall to save 10% off your first order. This is where the trail apparently gets thick. It's gonna be fun with a tripod on my back. Oh boy. When in doubt, just power through. Here we go. Sorry, get to tripod on my back. This is kind of dumb. Okay, little break. And some more. Here we go. This. This is stupid. I don't even know if this is a trail anymore. Bag's coming off. Actually, you know what? Is this? I don't know. There's a fellow who passed me and he went somewhere, so. Maybe we'll drag the bag through this. This is ridiculous. This is not a trail. No way. This is dumb. This one. Okay, that's where I came from back there. <laughs> Such an idiot. That's where I'm supposed to be going. Not that way, through ridiculous 
bushes <laughs> onto the actual trail that goes up. This is a trail now. A little better. Okay, so up at the top on some flat ground finally. Uh, looks like back there is, I believe that was the main mill for this quarry. This is what it's all about for me, this area, you know, North uh, Wales, Snowdonia, even though this isn't technically Snowdonia. It's just such an incredible landscape. It's so quiet too. You feel like you have these places to yourself. <sighs> so cool, just love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it up here. Also just feel like I never have enough time. Anyways, let's go. So this place is pretty wild. This old mill, just so much to see. So I think I'm gonna just explore for a little bit. Put the camera down, look around. See if I can find something. Okay, so I've had kind of a scout around this entire place. There is like, it's a little overwhelming. There's so much to see, but there's a couple potential images. One is kind of right over there looking back this way with uh, this old truck bed and frame and these two buildings. You can kind of see the mountains uh, through them. And then there's one in this building here, this old machinery, really interesting. My only dilemma is I have two sheets of black and white left, two sheets of HP5. Um, I loaded Portra and HP5 because I'm kind of undecided of uh, what I want to use making images up here. I've been shooting black and white so far and quickly realizing today that it seems like black and white is what feels fitting for a lot of these subjects. So yeah, two sheets left. It's making me a bit indecisive, but I think I might shoot this frame first. There's just some stuff up there that I want to look at. Regardless, if uh, we go up there, I'll shoot the Portra and then I could always return tomorrow or on another trip, but uh, should have loaded more HP5. Setup. And once again, I'm gonna go 105. This was a recent purchase and this focal length for the work I do on four x five. This is becoming a favorite quickly. Really like the perspective that it gives, especially for this landscape stuff. Okay, so this is a frame right here. Love this old bed from a pickup truck. I'm center framing that. And then I kind of have half of that building, half of that building. And this is uh, gonna be HP5. I think this could be a pretty cool frame. Nice contrast. A little bit of a windy day to no surprise. So I'm gonna use this bag again. Still uh, not the most stable ground out there, that's for sure. But we should be good, hopefully. It's nice, there's kind of this like soft filtered sunlight right now coming from over there, which I'm gonna try and be quick here and get that because it's, uh, it's quite nice. Just putting a little bit of shape on this truck bed. And I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna run up there in the scene, meter it with the incident meter. And I will double check with the spot just for fun. There's a really nice feature on the Sekonic L50 uh, 558R where you can meter basically the darkest point you're seeing and the brightest point, and you can average them out and it'll give you kind of your middle ground, which obviously isn't always gonna be perfect, but uh, it's lining up nice in this one. So we're gonna go uh, an eighth of a second, F32, ISO 320. I don't want this bag swinging too much. I'm gonna try and wait until maybe this wind dies down a little bit. So I'm really happy with how this image turned out. I just love the composition, all the details throughout. And what was interesting is that during the day, it was the first two images I made that I was most excited about. But after getting home and developing everything, um, I'm not actually that happy with them. And instead, this third image 
and even more so, the one I create next, turned out to be my favorites. And this was just a good reminder not to form conclusions while on location, and also to follow even the slightest intuition. I think you never exactly know how things will turn out until you're looking at them on screen or in print. No words for this place. So the view this way is amazing. The light is getting really nice. It is so windy up here though. Uh, I'm really tempted to try and make an image, but I just feel like, you know, I'm gonna be a, a little bit of slower shutter speed. So it's, it's gonna be impossible to keep things steady and sharp here with the uh, front standard facing into the wind essentially. So with it being my last frame, as tempted as I am, um, I think I'm gonna have to pull the plug on this location file it away and I think I'm going to start making my way back and try and shoot this way from a little further down and see if we can make something happen with that. Okay, so pretty much running out of light. We were over there earlier. I hiked all the way over here through this swamp, came up here, I was trying to get one last image overlooking the town. The light was really incredible this evening, but uh, these wide vistas are just challenging and also I started to lose some of this landscape and it kind of felt like I was just making kind of like a beautiful landscape shot of the town. Anyways, amazing night out. The light is great. What a day. Uh, you know, logged a ton of miles. We'll see how those images turn out. You know, three sheets isn't bad shooting four by five, especially in a landscape like this. And it's a process that I'm still very much um, just learning. And I like the slower pace. And you know, even if just one of those, or even if none of those images work, um, this is what it's all about. Just like putting in the reps and having these experiences, these like going to these places and looking at things with a detailed eye that you wouldn't otherwise. And uh, just getting to, yeah, be in these environments and see these things. I, I say this, I'm starting to say this more and more, but really these experiences are, are one of the most important reasons for me. Uh, when it comes to photography. So, can't wait to come back to this place. Looking forward to shooting more 4x5. Looking forward to seeing these images. And, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you, as always, for uh, for watching. I'm gonna go now, because I gotta walk through the swamp, and I gotta walk back down, and I'm pretty gassed, and I'm ready for a beer, and I'm ready for some food. Anyways, thanks again. See you next week. So you didn't think I'd actually end the video without shooting that fourth sheet, did you? I couldn't help but look on the way back, and there's actually a very nice view here. There's no more direct light on the foreground, so I'm hoping there's enough separation still or enough contrast, but uh, I'm actually kind of bummed that I missed this earlier when the light was at its peak because there's this road running into the town, and it looks really nice with the backdrop, and there's, it's just surrounded by this slate. So. I'm gonna set up as fast as possible because the sky's really nice and we're gonna shoot this sheet. Okay, here goes nothing. So this image is by far my favorite from the day. I just love how the large format captures the subtle differences in tones throughout the slate. And also just how the slate itself almost is imposing on the town. And it's funny because this almost didn't get made and the process was quite last minute. Again, it's just a good reminder, you know, to follow your intuition, experiment, and try things, even if you aren't 100% sure that they're going to work out. So I did spend one more day in the area, but I decided to put the video camera away and just make images. And this was very much an extension of the day before, with a few photographs I created being ones that I really enjoy. And overall, this just felt like a really successful trip back to Wales to work on this project that I'm now titling Slate City. You know, it's taken a couple years of experimentation to really gain clarity, but I'm definitely excited to see where this goes.